At a time when the commercial airline industry was still young and inexperienced, Germany designed a revolutionary transatlantic passenger plane whose colossal wingspan would earn it the name Condor. The unique airliner offered unparalleled cruising altitudes for commercial use at the time and was a reliable and safe aircraft meant to push Germany's aviation industry forward. However, the plane built in times of peace would not accomplish the role it was designed for, and as World War II exploded, the groundbreaking airliner would become a one-of-a-kind warplane. First used as a reconnaissance aircraft due to its high-altitude capabilities, it was then turned into a heavy bomber as the conflict dragged on. The Condor excelled in its new role, raining destruction over the Allied maritime supply lines with no mercy. Just three months after its debut as a bomber, the Condor had sunk over 90,000 tons of Allied shipping. Later, as the besieged Germans clung to life within the ruins of Stalingrad, Hermann Göring used Condors in daring supply runs to deliver goods to the starving 6th Army troops. However, its most eccentric and noteworthy role would not come in combat, but as the modified unit Immelmann III, a private model arranged for Adolf Hitler himself. Airline Innovation In the mid-1930s, aircraft engineer Kurt Tank of Focke-Wulf sent an ambitious design to Dr. Rudolf Strusel of Deutsche Lufthansa to develop a land plane to carry passengers across the Atlantic Ocean from Europe to the United States. The concept was groundbreaking. At the time, airlines used seaplanes for long routes in order to afford flying such distances over water. The FW200 was also innovative in its cruising altitude, it was designed to fly 9,800 feet above the ground without a pressurized cabin. The plane reached twice the altitude of conventional airliners used during the 1930s, until other high-altitude passenger planes such as the Boeing 307 in 1940 and the Douglas DC-4 in 1942 started flying. The nickname Condor was chosen because, like the Condor bird, the FW200 had a very long wingspan. As the Condor was being developed, Relations between America and Germany had still not deteriorated completely, and flying to the U.S. was not only the Condor's primary objective, but it also made use of American parts in its design. The initial prototype, finished in 1937, was powered by four American 875-horsepower Pratt & Whitney Hornet radial engines and could take up to 26 passengers to a distance of 3,000 kilometers. Then, as tensions rose in Europe, Germany switched the American engines to German 720 horsepower BMW 132G1 radials. Records The original FW200 V1 prototype was improved with additional fuel tanks and redesignated as FW200 S1, making numerous record flights. It was the first heavier than air airliner to fly non stop between Berlin and New York City, managing to cover over 4,000 miles in the air. The novel plane also accomplished a flight from Berlin to Floyd Bennett Field in August of 1938 in just under 24 hours 56 minutes. The return flight on August 13th then broke the record in 19 hours 47 minutes. As World War II loomed ever closer, the Imperial Japanese Navy requested a military version of the FW-200 for reconnaissance missions. Thus, Kurt Tunk designed a Condor with several military tools and capabilities. However, the military Condor would never be delivered to the Japanese, as World War II broke into a conflict of unparalleled proportions in September of 1939. At that point, Germany decided to keep the military version of the plane for its own use, and as flights from Germany to the US were increasingly unlikely, most of the remaining Condor units were readjusted to serve as warplanes. Despite the sudden role change, many Condors had already been sold to Brazil, and they continued to serve as airliners. In Germany, Deutsche Lufthansa also kept several planes that would continue to carry passengers between Axis-friendly territories. An airliner for war Even before the war broke out, the Condor was already being used as part of the planning for the German onslaughts that were soon to come. In 1939, German Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop used a specially equipped Condor called Grenzmark during his two visits to Moscow to negotiate and sign the non-aggression treaty between Germany and the Soviet Union. The Luftwaffe initially used the modified Condor to support the Kriegsmarine, 
making broad trips across the North Sea, and after the fall of France, the Atlantic Ocean, in extensive patrols and reconnaissance sorties. The Condors would pinpoint the location of Allied convoys and warships so that German U-boats could intercept them. Soon, the makeshift reconnaissance Condors were fitted to carry explosive payloads of up to 2,200 pounds, as well as naval mines. Also, the Condors became exceptionally efficient bombers during the war's early phase, as the Allies still lacked substantial anti-maritime equipment. From June 1940 to February 1941, the aircraft sank over 365,000 tons of Allied shipping, despite their rather primitive bombing maneuvers. Because the Condors were not designed as bombers, they had to perform extremely low-altitude raids to cover the target ship with three bombs that guaranteed a hit. Soon, the airliner-turned-bomber performed so well that Winston Churchill called it the, quote, scourge of the Atlantic, for its contribution to the severe Allied shipping losses during the Battle of the Atlantic. As the war dragged on, Germany's aircraft manufacturing capabilities became severely strained, and the BB-138C flying boat became Germany's primary reconnaissance aircraft. Thus, they ordered the Condor crews to immediately stop attack operations and preserve the already low numbers that remained in service. After the summer of 1941, the Condors were solely used as transport aircraft, delivering men and supplies to the ever-spreading German forces on the Eastern Front. However, as the German 6th Army became entrapped within the city ruins during the Battle of Stalingrad, the Condors were notoriously used in attempts to supply the starving soldiers. Hitler himself had taken command of the Stalingrad operation, and he vehemently refused to withdraw or surrender before the Soviets. Still, such stubbornness came from an infamous miscalculation, as Hermann Göring assured Hitler that the Luftwaffe could effectively supply the stranded troops using cargo planes and air superiority. Göring then used all the Condors available to him and other cargo planes to deliver food and ammunition to the 6th Army as it fiercely withstood the Soviet attacks and the overwhelming winter cold. But the Germans significantly overestimated their airborne capabilities against the Soviets' anti-aircraft operations and leading to the surrender of the few remaining troops. The Condor would continue to serve as a German transport aircraft until the end of the war. Hitler's Personal Plane the Condor's exceptional performance would earn it a unique role only a few German planes were allowed to fulfill, to transport Adolf Hitler himself. During the 1930s, air travel was still a novel concept, and not many world leaders used airplanes as transport, let alone had their own personal aircraft. Hitler was a pioneer of the idea of world leaders traveling the world by plane and having their own private airliner at their disposal. Soon after its debut, Hitler's personal pilot, Hans Bauer, insisted that the Condor was not only a remarkable passenger plane, but that it was the safest and most reliable German transport available. He pleaded with the dictator to switch his Junkers Ju-57 personal plane for the innovative FW-200. The Condor selected by Hitler was then modified according to Hitler's explicit needs and whims. The 26-passenger airliner was reconfigured as a plush two-cabin luxury plane, and Hitler's main cabin was outfitted with an opulent wooden desk reinforced with heavy armor plating and an automatic parachute system. A special hatch below Hitler's desk would allow him to escape quickly in case of an emergency. All windows in the plane were fitted with 15mm bulletproof glass. Behind Hitler's cabin was a passenger cabin, with six luxury seats designed to accommodate the Führer's advisors and important guests, with the cabin resembling a first-class railroad cart from the time. The unique Condor was also equipped with two defensive turrets. One held a 13mm MG-131 machine gun mounted at the aircraft's top, and a nose turret with a 7.1mm MG-15. Hitler's Condor carried the markings D-600 and was named Immelmann III in honor of World War I flying ace Max Immelmann. The plane accompanied a second Condor, transporting Hitler's staff and personal cargo during every flight. Security protocols on the Immelmann III were remarkably meticulous. The Führer's advisors knew that if the Condor was secretly fused, it would have to be with an altitude-triggered bomb set to detonate as the plane reached a certain altitude. To address the issue, every time Hitler was planning to board the plane, the crew would take it on a 20-minute test flight, where it would climb to its maximum altitude and ensure the aircraft was safe for the Führer to travel in. 
As the war was approaching its end, Hitler traveled less, with his Condor remaining grounded at the Berlin Tempelhof Airport most of the time. Then, as the Allies took command of the skies over Germany, a bombing raid on July 18, 1944, destroyed the Immelmann III. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and share to support our channels, and don't forget to subscribe to our Dark Documentaries family, where we publish exciting new videos every day. Stay tuned.